Disney's musicals or musicals to anime pipeline baffles many people, but I am telling you now, if you type in the name of any popular anime followed by gay or European, there is a 99% chance that an AMV, MEP, or edit exists of it. So, the fandom pipeline. Start off in one fandom, and after a while, in a strange set of circumstances, circumstances, you find yourself in five completely unrelated fandoms. Today, we'll be exploring the little invisible railroad that will take you from one fandom to another, oftentimes without you even realizing it. But this railroad has multiple tracks. It's not just a one straight shot pipeline. There are plenty of options and possible permutations for one's fandom journey. So we'll be meandering through them. But remember, lovely viewer, regardless of where you started and where you're passing through at the moment, we're all gonna end up in the same place. Fandom hell. So hop aboard the fandom pipeline, everybody. But before we begin, I wanna give a very special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Sakurako and Tokyo Tree. Sakurako and Tokyo Tree are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that give you a huge variety of different snacks to munch on and a way to enjoy Japanese culture in your own home. If you're looking for traditional, authentic artisan Japanese snacks, then Sakurako is the way to go for you. Each box will include items like specialty Japanese teas and one piece of special Japanese tableware. May's box comes with this gorgeous set of chopsticks. If you want the latest, most exclusive, seasonal Japanese snacks, then Tokyo Treat is your box, with items that are only available in Japan for limited time. Each box comes with its own booklet that goes over every snack included, so you can pick out what you want to try first and see what best matches your taste. Both Sakurako and Tokyo Treat come with different themes every month. Sakurako's May theme is matcha and mochi. I'm not a picky eater, so I was pretty on board with everything in this box. The first thing I really wanted to try was the matcha. Wafer. Oh my god, I love these cookies! And there's a matcha wafer! I just had a ratatouille moment where I was at my grandmother's table having these types of cookies with her. I love daifuku and the matcha cream ones were absolutely delicious. I was intrigued by this matcha manju as I've had buns similar to it but never this specific type. This green tea filling is absolutely everything. I'm someone who grew up going to Asian grocery stores and was that kid always begging their mom for cute snacks. And there's so much stuff in here that I've never even seen before, so this is really cool for me. Tokyo Treats theme for May is Sakura Picnic, perfect for springtime and the vibes are immaculate. There's these super cute limited edition Sakura candies. <laughs> Cowpiece is up there with my favorite drinks and the fact that there's a melon cream soda version. I'm never drinking root beer again. And I've never seen this type of snack before. I have no idea what this is. But it's mochi taro. I can't Stop eating. But my favorite snack, I think, from this box would have to be the Tokyo Layer Loaf. It's like the best of a King's Hawaiian roll, but with red bean and strawberry in it. Are you kidding what me? The frick? <laughs> if you're down to give Sakurako or Tokyo Treat a try, and I highly recommend you do, these snacks are incredible. Then use my code Coley for $5 off your first box through my links in the description. I hope you're aware of the fact that I will be eating everything in these boxes as we go through the fandom pipeline. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat, your foodie lover's dream. Let's dive into the fandom pipeline. Okay, before you say anything, I know this looks like a scary hot mess, but don't worry, I'll be walking you through it step by step. This is very much the first iteration, first draft of the fandom pipeline. I intend to keep working on this. It'll be an indefinite project, and you guys can help me out with that too. I want to add different colors in, more different lines, but for now, this is the bare bones map of everything, and it's, it's a lot. <laughs> there will be a fandom pipeline 2.0 video in the near future. Let me explain my spaghetti brain reasoning. <laughs> so it may be a little hard to see when zoomed out, but when I zoom in, the lines look visibly different. The bolder and darker the line, the more intuitive the connection between two fandoms is. If it's lighter, it may be a little harder to see the connection, and if the line is dotted, you may be scratching your head wondering why those two fandoms are connected in the first place. When in doubt, assume things either connect to or will lead to anime. Let's start off with, I don't know, Avatar. So with Avatar, we've got a dotted light line to musicals. This one is a little elusive. The musical fandom and the Avatar fandom are no doubt intertwined, and I think a large part of it could be due to animatics, edits, AMVs using musical songs. But you wouldn't guess off the bat that the two fandoms have a lot of overlap. Well, there are a lot of theater kids in both fandoms, so... Yeah, that's that's probably it. Avatar also connects to Voltron, and it makes sense because they have similar animation styles that are influenced by anime, and they both actually lead to anime, as you can see. Teen Titans is up there as well, and the Avatar to Teen Titans pipeline is pretty strong due to the fact that a lot of kids moved on to Teen Titans once they finished Avatar. So yeah, these three are connected through anime. Anime has a pipeline in of itself that I will cover at some point. If I were to do every anime that had its own little 
subsections to other fandoms would be even messier. K-pop and anime are very closely intertwined. Whether you start off with K-pop and then move on to anime or anime to K-pop, at some point, if you enter one, it's very likely you'll get into the other. Mm. Oh my god, this bread is good. Please don't spill all over my laptop. But these three connected as well, K-dramas, K-pop, and anime. I've noticed it's usually anime to K-pop to K-dramas. Less common is anime to K-dramas to K-pop or K-dramas to anime to K-pop. K-pop and anime are typically connected first or K-dramas and K-pop. K-pop does have its own pipeline as well, but it's not as interconnected to other fandoms. Its own contained beast in a way. If I were to do the K-pop pipeline though, BTS would kind of be its own island. Like a lot of people go into BTS and then they don't leave. We've got President Namjoon for the army. <laughs> I just added a new connection between gaming YouTube and K-pop. I have a connection between video games and K-pop, but gaming YouTube and K-pop are pretty intertwined as well. Not as intuitively as K-pop and anime, but with gaming YouTube, a lot of gamers will play K-pop as the background for their games. A lot of League players are in both spheres. VTubers, it's basically, wow, it's a beautiful anime person, but in 3D and they can interact with you. And then of course, a lot of VTubers stream on Twitch, so this makes sense. And they'll play Minecraft, although Minecraft here can refer to both the game and the sort of communities that developed around the game, like SMPs. Minecraft itself is kind of its own beast, which is why I separated it from the more general video games category. Same thing goes for Five Nights at Freddy's and Undertale. They had such distinct fan cultures that to lump them together with just video games, wouldn't do it justice. But moving up to this corner over here, yeah, these five are very closely intertwined with one another. If you entered one, chances are you ended up in another at some point, whether it's the Warrior Cats, to My Little Pony, Pipeline, which anthropomorphic animal type pieces of media, and then from that to Undertale, again, anthropomorphic animal pipeline to Homestuck or the other way around. It's the horns. Wait, did I connect these two? I didn't. Oh, bad Coley. There we go. Yeah, these two definitely have an overlap. A lot of My Little Pony people do love musicals as well. It makes sense because there are songs in the show. But one connection I think might elude people and is still a little mysterious to me, honestly, is the connection between musicals and the bandom. Bandom mostly refers to the people who liked 21 Pilots, Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance. They're both distinct, albeit very different niches of music, so that makes sense. A lot of contemporary musicals have more coming of age themes, which connects to a lot of the music the bandom produces, so that's also another plausible explanation. And then the bandom does connect to Super Hulok as well. Let's go into Super Hulok a bit. There's a lot of connections with Super Hulok. For one, we've got the connection with Harry Potter. A lot of crossovers between the two in fan works and they say pieces of media as if Super Hulok is its own entity. I mean, it kind of is, but it's three distinct shows anyway. I mean, Doctor Who, Sherlock, and Harry Potter are all British. And then Supernatural, Harry Potter, and Doctor Who kind of have mystical fantasy elements to them. Doctor Who's more sci-fi, but yeah. Investigation and mystery play a big role in all of their plots. So yeah, if anyone likes any of these, then it's very likely they're a Harry Potter fan as well. Homestuck to Super Hulock or Super Hulock to Homestuck has to do a lot with Tumblr culture. When Homestuck was big and booming, it was at the same time as Super Hulock. So if you saw one and you kept on seeing the other and then eventually you get curious, so you explore and there you go. And this also applies to the Onesler fandom, just sheer proximity to each other on the hell site known as Tumblr. <laughs> because Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock each had their own graphic novels or comics at some point, a lot of people entered the graphic novel bubble or comic bubble through Super Hula. And I mean, tell me it's not true. <laughs> this leads to this as well, the Super Hulok to Marvel movie to comic pipeline. Going back to Harry Potter though, you'd be surprised how many people actually end up on the Harry Potter to One Direction pipeline. And then this kind of funny pipeline goes into CW shows. Although more often than not, you see Harry Potter to YA novels to CW shows. This is pretty self-explanatory, I think. It's just the same sort of themes and stories happening on screen versus in books. Very dramatic, lots of romance, teenagers not really acting like teenagers. So there's a funny little square going on over here. Lots of Harry Potter fans or ex-Harry Potter fans love D&D &D as well, which both have fantasy environments and elements. This is a very clear jump. Critical Role is a show where a bunch of professional voice actors play Dungeons and Dragons. D&D &D to fantasy podcast is very clear as well. Podcasts 
such as Magnus Archives, Adventure Zone. We've got the holy nerdy fantasy triad going on. Oh, Disney. So pretty clear that Star Wars and Marvel are connected to Disney because Disney owns them and a lot of Disney fans kind of either got into Marvel or Star Wars because of Disney. So with this, a lot of YouTube people will make content at Disneyland or incorporate Disney shows, movies, stuff in their videos. Or it's kind of like the millennial Disney adult pipeline. Like if you enjoyed the British vloggers of the 2010s or Dan and Phil, Tyler Oakley, Nerdfighteria, the connection is there. And then the Disney to Miraculous Ladybug fandom. Even if Disney didn't distribute Miraculous Ladybug, Miraculous Ladybug has a lot of Disney elements in it. Colorful transformations, a hammy villain, bouncy characters. I'm tempted to connect these two, but I'm not sure if the connection is strong enough for me to warrant it. Yeah, a lot of it's just more of like the millennial sort of connections between these. But these two are connected enough for me to include. Similar story beats in their plots that appeal to the crowd that likes them both. Hopping back to Miraculous Ladybug, there is a clear connection between the show and YA novels. It's mainly due to the romance. A lot of people are very frustrated with everything going on in here in terms of who is in love with who and why can't they be together. So they may try to get their fill elsewhere. <laughs> Miraculous also has ties to the comic fandom, both because it has its own comic going on and because it's just superheroes. People like their superhero media and there's actually been a good amount of fan crossovers between Batman in particular with Miraculous. This exists mostly due to personal experience. I noticed in middle school when I was really into Teen Titans that a lot of people that love Teen Titans also love books like Twilight or Vampire Diaries, just any sort of edgier young adult novel. Percy Jackson though, where are you Percy? Many people started off with Percy Jackson and then moved on to YA novels. I'd say a good chunk of people who have read Percy Jackson have also read Harry Potter or vice versa. Just the literary trio going on. But something distinct about Percy Jackson is that there is a clear defined connection between Percy Jackson and this whole corner over here. If you were really into Greek mythology as a kid, chances are you started reading Percy Jackson at some point and then somehow found yourself in this corner. There could be a line from Harry Potter to this corner, but I've noticed it a lot stronger with Percy Jackson readers. So I think people who have read both Percy Jackson and Harry Potter could end up in here, but not necessarily just Harry Potter readers end up in this corner. Musicals as well. I should probably add a Percy Jackson to musical connection because yeah, that's undeniably there. Uh, there we go. And it's not just because of the Percy Jackson musical. It existed even before that musical came into production. Chances are, if you were part of Rise of the Brave Tangled Dragons, you were also a one slang. And this is mostly due to villain lovers from Disney loving the Onceler and his beautiful get-up and villain song. So with the general video games category, you've got obvious connections to Minecraft, Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Sonic, and then Japanese video games. I know Sonic is a Japanese video game, but again, it's such its own beast that I need to separate. But of course, a lot of video game enjoyers also enjoy cartoons, especially adult cartoons like Rick and Morty, Bojack, Bob's Burgers, South Park, Steven Universe as well. Like for instance, I've noticed a lot of people who like Detroit Become Human, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Last of Us do enjoy Steven Universe. Steven Universe and Voltron are also quite connected because they both were coming out around the same time. Steven Universe had this comic panel where two characters in the background looked a lot like Clance and they both kind of suffered from a lot of the same fan problems. This is not the healthiest pipeline. These two are very connected as well. I think Gravity Falls and Adventure Time kind of had like a dynamic duo thing going on for a while. They're all just kind of mind f shows and people eat that up. I like to call these four pieces over here the existential gamer who likes animation pipeline. <laughs> My Little Pony is very connected to Sonic through the love of OCs. Both of these fandoms love creating original characters. This connection over here is rainbow colored wink wong as well as this one. This is the fruity triangle of the west. <laughs> Going into Genshin, obviously a lot of anime fans love it because the characters, man. What's curious though is that I've noticed a lot of Genshin fans have been migrating to the BL and Danmei corner of the internet. I was debating including this because it's not a super 
prevalent presence online, but it's there and it's strong. For me at least, this pipeline occurred because I was very, very tired of all the infighting happening here, and this has been an absolute breath of fresh air. This sentiment I've seen expressed through other people. But it happens the other way around as well. People who like BL and Dunmei will see fan art of these amazing Genshin characters and be like, whoa. I'm gonna hop over there, there's a lot of content. Also with Genshin, you have the VTuber pipeline. Again, just pretty characters with pretty character models. Some little honorable mentions I wanna point out. This is very real. I don't know why exactly it happens. I was debating including Total Drama Island in the first place because it falls under the Cartoon Network shows category. But if you were part of this fandom or are part of it, or at least knew about it, it is pretty distinct. Oh. Peculiar. And I can't believe I didn't include this, but yeah, these two are quite connected due to Total Drama Island having musical numbers. A lot of drama kids I knew in middle and high school were into Total Drama Island. Webtoons and graphic novels are very similar, but webtoons have more of a connection to anime, I found, whereas graphic and light novels tend to be more for the literary crowd. Oh yeah, Ruby. A lot of Sonic fans love Ruby. Again, I think this is kind of like an OC loving pipeline. Ruby, Sonic, and My Little Pony love their original characters. Lots of bright colors and creative fights. I think it really scratches the brain's need for flashy stimulation. Lots of people who enjoy Danganronpa and Persona tend to like Ruby. Ruby has its own video game and is anime inspired, so it makes sense. The anime to musicals or musicals to anime pipeline baffles many people, but I am telling you now, if you type in the name of any popular anime followed by gay or European, there is a 99% chance that an AMV, MEP, or edit exists of it. And there you have it, you concluded your first ride on the fandom pipeline. A lot of this was done in sort of a sleep-deprived fugue state, so pardon me if anything's missing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you've enjoyed seeing just how interconnected so many of these fandoms actually are. Again, this still is very much a work in progress, so if you have any suggestions on how we should color code things, or additional fandoms I should include, then let me know in the comments. The Fandom Pipeline 2.0 is coming, watch out. Were you or are you on any of the pipelines mentioned in this video? Here's a whole screenshot of the entire pipeline if you wanna try deciphering it yourself. And I'll also provide a picture on my Instagram story and Twitter. Thanks again for watching guys, I'll see you in my next video, bye.